love. Neither death nor life. Neither angels nor demons. Neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from the love of God. This verse tells us that God's love for us is a sure thing. So it is in our best interest to hold on to God's unchanging hand and not let God's hand go. So what does it mean to hold on to God's unchanging hand? It means to not give up, but trust God. It means to build your hopes Father God, that you forgive us. Forgive us 
us for not recognizing Jesus as we should, especially during this season. Lord, forgive us, Father God, for not following your will and your way. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us through your word. Bless your word to speak to us. Bless your word to be revealed to us. And bless us to walk in your word in such a way, Father God, that you will get the glory. And all the praise will go to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. unchanging hands. Hold on to him and he will hold on to you. There's no doubt about it. Thank you again for joining us tonight for another round of Bible study. Thank you for being a part of our service and being with us on tonight. We're back in Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9 is where we are. We're looking at verses 6 through 7. We looked at verse 6 on last week and so we want to look at verses 6 through 7 tonight and close out this particular portion of the pericope. <clears throat> Verses 6 through 7. We're still talking about Jesus. <laughs> Isn't that something? We're still talking about Jesus. For the last 30 years of my preaching, I've been preaching about Jesus. That's a good thing. For the last 18 years of my pastorate, I've been preaching about Jesus. For the last 35, 40 years of being uh, saved, I've been talking about Jesus. We ought to talk about Jesus. We don't spend time enough talking about Jesus. And if we would just talk about Jesus more, then Jesus will be able to bless us more and we'll be able to hear from him more. So let's look at Isaiah chapter 9, verses uh, 6 and 7. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. We found out some things on last week, and we would just reiterate those things on tonight. In verse number 6, um, we're talking about Jesus. And, and it's some would say that it's ironic that we're talking about Jesus in the midst of the Old Testament. We must understand that the Old Testament points to Jesus. The New Testament confirms what the Old Testament has said about Jesus. So in the Old Testament, Jesus is concealed. You have to dig for it. But in the New Testament, Jesus is revealed. So all the prophecies that are prophesied in the Old Testament is shown forth in the New Testament. Therefore, regardless of what we do, what we see, what we go through, then we trust Jesus because Jesus is throughout the entire 66 books. So when you look at Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6, it begins by saying, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. We talked about last week that this is the hypostatic union, the hypostatic union. H-Y-P-O-S-T-A-T-I-C, the hypostatic union, the hypostatic union. When we look at verse number six, we see Jesus Christ. He is the only person who possesses the hypostatic union. We found out on last week, as many of those of you who go to New Beginning Church Bible study know, uh, we already knew and we re reiterated on last week that the hypostatic union is Jesus Christ with two natures. One man with two natures. I only have one nature. My nature, my nature, my nature, my born nature is only human. Jesus Christ is both God and human. Right here in the text, when you look at verse number six, you will find, for unto us a child is born. This word born points out to us that Jesus is human. It points out to us that there is a biological uh, mandate that is found in Jesus. A child is born. Unto us a child is born. 
is simply saying to us that Jesus is, Jesus was human. So when we look at Mary, we see Mary in the human flesh. We see Mary as the conduit by which Jesus came. When we look at Mary, we see, G we see Mary as the instrument by which God gave us Jesus. So it makes Jesus human. He came from a human being. He came from a woman, a fleshly human being. So when a child is born, a child is born in the flesh. A child is born unto human. It's not until we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior that we are born again, that we become spiritual. So he says, for unto us a child is born. So Isaiah points out many years before Jesus is born that there will be a human being. There will be a biological specimen. Jesus Christ himself, he will be born unto us. And this child that is born is born unto us. He is born for the fact that he's coming for us. He's born for the fact that the reason why he's born is because of us. He is born for the fact that if it had not been for Jesus, we would not be saved. So this child, Jesus, is born, physically born. He is born biologically made. He is human. God has wrapped himself up in human form. He comes as a human being in Bethlehem of Judea from a human being, Mary herself, he is born. So we find that Jesus is human. We find that Jesus is a biological specimen. Mary is his biological mother. Unto us a son is given. The word given translates that Jesus Christ is, is deity. The word given says that Jesus Christ is, is given from God. God the Father, he is deity. Not only that, if Jesus is going to save mankind from this world, Jesus has to be just as much man as man, just as much God as God. And when it says, unto us a son is given, this son who is given, is it has to come legally from the tribe of David from the family of David, from the lineage of David. When you look at Luke and when you look at Matthew, they say that he is born humanly, biologically of Mary. And then it says that he's born legally of, of Joseph. Where you get that from? The reason why I'm telling you this is because a legal decree went out. And he had to be born in the city of David from Mary, who is of the lineage of David. He had to be physically born in the city, but he had to be legally born of Joseph. Joseph was the chosen one. He was legally born because a legal decree went out. They had to go back to Bethlehem to, to meet with the IRS, for lack of a better word. And he was legally born through Joseph's lineage, but he was given through God himself. Here we have the hypostatic union, the hypostatic union, H-Y-P-O-S-T-A-T-I-C, the hypostatic union. It means that Jesus is God and man all in one nature. So it takes two natures. Is coming together to make Jesus Christ one nature. So we have the hypostatic union. Goes on to say, and the government will be upon his shoulder. This word government means that Jesus will have dominion. It means Jesus will reign. And it will be a peaceful reign. When we look at the world in which we live today, when we look at the world and how we see it today, 
It looks like the devil is winning on every single hand. It looks like the devil got it going on. It looks like we're going to fail. It looks like even as Christians, we have fallen. It looks like as Christians, we made the wrong decision. It looks like the devil is winning. But I stopped by to let you know on my way to the rapture that the devil has his day. And Jesus will reign. Jesus will have dominion. He will have dominion and he will reign on earth. He will reign even in the millennium. And it will be a peaceful reign. Jesus has dominion. His, the government will be on his shoulder. Jesus will have the weight of this world on his shoulder. When you look at Jesus' death on Calvary, Jesus had the weight of the world on his shoulder. But he did not call for a legion of angels. He stayed on the cross. He stayed there. He died for you and he died for me. Jesus Christ did it. He, he took the weight of your sin and my, my sin. He took the weight. He stayed under the weight. He bared up the weight. Jesus Christ will reign. Jesus Christ will have dominion. And his dominion will be manifested. And his reign will be peaceful. Wars all over the place. Bombing all over the place. Hang in there. Jesus Christ will reign. Men may not choose to bow down to him now, but there will come the day that every soul, every person will bow down to Jesus. Every person, every person will have to one day bow down to Jesus Christ. Every person will one day admit that he is Lord, that he is God. And not only is he Lord, not only is he God, he will be shown as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. When we look at Philippians chapter 2, it lets us know some things about Jesus. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 7. It says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God, he's in a form of God, in, a, in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal to God. In other words, God did not compete with Jesus. Jesus did not compete with God. <laughs> they are in total agreement. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are in total agreement. They didn't ever overstep and will not overstep each other's bounds. Jesus says, I got to leave you now. And says, I got to leave you. And when I leave you, the comforter is coming. When I get out of here, don't worry about it. I'm going to send you somebody, somebody, the comforter, a person, the comforter. I'm going to send you the comforter. And the comforter will repeat what I've said. He will confirm what I've said. Thought it not robbery to be equal to God. Verse number seven, Philippians chapter two, verse number seven but made himself of no reputation, taken on the form of a bond servant. In other words, he left his place in glory, came to planet Earth, and took on the position, the form of a man, the form of a bond servant, coming in the likeness of man. Jesus Christ confirmed here in Philippians, as well as it is in Isaiah, that he is... The hyperstatic union. He is God, man, and he is man who is God. One person, Jesus Christ, brings about the hyperstatic union. The government shall be upon his shoulder and his name will be called. Because he has the hyperstatic union, these four, some people say five, I will say four, these four titles 
confirms him as Jesus, the God. It says, it says, his name shall be called, if you look at it from a standpoint that is five, you will say wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. If you look at it as four different titles, you would say wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, the Prince of Peace. The God that we serve, Jesus Christ himself, is a wonderful counselor, meaning that he's a divine counselor. He is divine. He is our divine advisor. If you want some advice, go to Jesus. He's our divine counselor. Then he says, mighty God. This indicates that he's a powerful warrior. If you want somebody to fight for you, he needs to try Jesus. He will fight your battles. I'm a living witness that Jesus is able, Jesus is willing, and Jesus will fight your battles. That he will do it because he is the powerful warrior. His name is Jesus. Then he says he's the everlasting father. Again, it shows us that Jesus is just as much God as God, just as much man as man. He is the everlasting father. This describes him as the king. It also describes him as the father. He is the king and the father who provides for us and he protects us. The everlasting, how long? From now on. He's the everlasting father. He provides for us. He protects us. Even when the government does not provide for us, Jesus provides for us and Jesus protects us. He's the everlasting father. And he does it for his people from now on. He does it from now on. He is the everlasting father. Thank God. And if you think that you're fatherless, you are not fatherless. Jesus Christ knows how to provide for you. He provides for you. He protects you. And he will provide for you from now on. He is the everlasting father. He protects us. If, if you thought that your 45, 22, 9 millimeter, your, your sword protects you. There are other situations you've been in that the gun cannot protect that knives cannot protect you because there's a war going on in high places, in heavenly places, in the spiritual realm. And we need Jesus to protect us. He is. He is the everlasting father who protects us. He sees for us. He provides for us. He blesses us. Then he says, not only is he the everlasting father who protects us and provides for us, He's also the ideal king. And he will one day be known as the king of kings. He will reign. And we already know him as the king of kings. But every person in this world will know Jesus Christ as the king of kings. He's the king of kings. He's the everlasting father. And finally, it says that he is the prince of peace. Even though Jesus is just as much God as God, he's the prince. Even though Jesus is considered the king, he's also considered the, the prince. And this is the high moment. He is the prince of peace. He is the child of peace. This child that is born, this son that is given, he is the the one who will usher into us peace. If your life is in a wreck and there is no peace, let me tell you, he's the Prince of Peace. If you want peace, call on the Prince of Peace. He is the one that can settle your situation. I know all of us want, want that, that high time where where Jesus was in the storm with his disciples and the disciples said, Jesus, don't you care? Wake up. 
Wake up. Don't you care? The storm is about to overtake us. Don't you care? You act like you don't care, Jesus. And guess what? Jesus stands up, says to the winds and the waves, peace be still. The waves lay down like a sleeping baby. The winds stop howling. The billows stop coming over in the boat. The water ceased to be troubled. All of us want that climactic moment. We, we want that moment where we can testify how Jesus calmed the storm for us. But I'm here to tell you when Jesus gives you peace, you don't wait on him to calm the storm. Because if your storm does not cease, you know when your soul is anchored in the Lord, you know if Jesus doesn't calm the storm, he can always calm his child in the midst of the storm. He's the prince of peace. He can calm the child in the midst of the storm. And because he's the prince of peace, he has the right to reign. Because he's the prince of peace, he has the right and he knows how to usher in peace. He is the prince of peace. So these four aspects of Jesus, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, proves that he is deity. They prove not only that Jesus is deity, not only that he's God, it also proves that he is human. You see, some people worship a God that can't feel their pain, can't feel their infirmities. But Jesus walked these mundane shores as a human being. He felt our pain. He felt our needs. He felt our infirmities. Thank God for Jesus. Because he was a man. As a man, he cried. But as a God, he forgave. As a man, he died. But as God, he rose early that third day morning. He is the epitome of the hypostatic union. He is. He makes up the hypostatic union. He is. He's God. The verse number seven. It says, of the increase of his government and in peace, there will be no end. The increase of his reign. In other words, this word, this phrase, of his increase is translated to mean that him, he himself, will be increased. If you want more love, you need more Jesus. It is translated, to him will be increased. Jesus will be increased. His government and his peace, meaning that he will have a peaceful reign talks about the millennium, the period where Jesus spends 1,000 years and his peace is, is present. His rule of peace to the believer's heart will be present. And it is present for the present age as well as the future age. Let me tell you, if you want peace today, call on Jesus. It says that it will increase. His dominion, his reign will increase. The believer can believe that Jesus offers peace today. You don't have to wait to get peace. You don't have to get in a prayer line to get peace. You don't need anybody to blow upon you to get peace. Call on Jesus, he gives peace. Your pills may not be helping you, but I know somebody who can give you peace. His name is Jesus, the righteous son, the son of God. Of his, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will show forth peace from now on. He will have control of peace from now on. This Jesus we're talking about, there will be no end to his peace. We talk about when we get to heaven and who we want to see. Stop waiting on who you want to see. Just see Jesus. For when you see Jesus, there will be no end to his reign. Mm -hmm. There will be no end to his government. 
there will be no end to his peace. It will have no end. It will be forever. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, there will be no end. The Bible says, the Bible predicts that there will always be one on the throne from the lineage of David. His name is Jesus. Jesus the Christ. There will never be anybody that will supersede Jesus in his rulership, in his reign, in his dominion. There will always be one named Jesus who will rule in the kingdom of God. The risen Jesus Christ, he brings his rule to our presence and he gives us peace because he's the one who has, has risen from the dead. No other person is qualified to bring us peace. No other person is qualified to save us other than the one who died for us and rose from us. for us. His name is Jesus. He will establish his kingdom of God, which will be the reign of peace. Everywhere you go, people looking for peace. Everywhere you go, there, there's a lack of peace. When there used to be peace in the family, we can't find it anymore. When it used to be peace and love, we can't find it. I mean, we used to even sing songs, even in a secular world, love and happiness. But now we, we don't sing those songs as much anymore. We have to find our peace, our joy, our hope in Jesus. I ask you as you go through the, go toward the end of the year and go into the new year, stop looking to man. Look to Jesus. Stop trying on people and individuals. Try on Jesus. Finally, finally it says, to order it, and to establish it with judgment and justice. What it says to us today is Jesus is the ultimate judge. God is the ultimate ruler. The Holy Spirit will, will unction us to do what's right. As a matter of fact, today we find ourselves in between socialism and, and, political, and politics. So this social political situation that we find ourselves in, many have said that we don't need to be involved in it. And that's why our world suffers and there's no real transformational leadership because the preacher is staying in the building. The members say, oh, you shouldn't be out there dealing with that. But it says here, in this text, verse number seven, Jesus is concerned about judgment and he's concerned about justice. And we have so much injustice today that we just hang our head up and leave it alone. Let me share with you, we have to be concerned about everybody. We have to be concerned about those who are marginalized. We have to be concerned about those who really think they got it going on. We have to be concerned about those who, who are helpless. We have to speak up for those who can't speak up for us, for themselves. Because there will come a day that we cannot speak up for ourselves. Just keep living. Steps get shorter. Breath get faint. Heartbeat become unconstant. We need somebody to speak up for us. Therefore, we ought to speak up for somebody, even today. Jesus is concerned that in this social political climate, that we're willing to vote, we're willing to speak up, we're willing to speak out. To order it and to establish it, what is it? The throne of David. To order it and establish it with, with judgment and justice. Some people don't want to, they don't want to be shaken. They don't want to get involved. Leave me alone. And they act like problems are just going to fade away. I just want to have a great day. I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to get involved in anything. Let me tell you, if you're on planet Earth, 
you are involved. When you don't speak out, when you don't uh, judge properly, when you don't stand up for justice, know that our Jesus expects us to. Many people have come to the point in their lives where they've come to protest, and we ought to, but the problem with protest today in America, as it has been years ago, is that people who are leading the oppression, they know that protest will last two weeks to a month, and then the protesting will die down. But when we stand for justice, then we know that it will live from now on. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus' throne, Jesus' reign, and Jesus' dominion will live from now on. From that time forth and even forever is what Isaiah says. It will live from this point and forever. David, David's, David's throne, and he who will sit on his throne, Jesus Christ, fulfill the promise of the prophecies that there will always be one on the throne from the lineage of David. Jesus, the child that is born, the human, the biological specimen, and son, the son that is given, Jesus, the legal heir from Joseph. He is the hypostatic union. And the final part of that verse says, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The almighty God will make it happen. We quote scripture all the time. We say Romans 8 and 28 says, and all things will work together for the good to them that love the Lord and to them that are called according to his purpose. And we're right. But God is looking to use us. I would that you challenge yourself as I challenge you today. If the Lord spares you to end this year out, if the Lord spares you to start a new year, make a commitment to yourself that you're going to do it God's way. You see, if I've come to the conclusion that, that people know when they're not doing it God's way, they feel, as some would say, some kind of way. We know when we're going to sin. We know when we are sinning. But the fact of the matter is, when we do it God's way, we feel good about the way we do it. I challenge you this year, the rest of this year, we got a few more days left. I challenge you to decide to commit to do it God's way. Walk through the whole Bible. Live by the whole Bible. Confess by the whole Bible. Don't pick and choose as if it's a buffet because a child is born. A son is given. His name is Jesus. Let's commit as he has committed. Not only did he commit for a moment, he committed for a lifetime. He gave his life. He, he gave his life as a ransom for you and me. And in order for Jesus to redeem us, in order for Jesus to save us, he had to do it legally and he had to do it humanly. So Jesus legally and humanly gave himself for us. So here we have the hypostatic union. And this hypostatic union found in Jesus Christ lets us know that there's no other person who can save us. It took a man to save men, women, boys, and girls. But it also took a God, the only God to save men and women, boys and girls. It took God to save us. We couldn't save ourselves. It took Jesus himself, a human, a God, the God to save us. We couldn't save ourselves. So what God did, the late Pastor Manson Johnson used to say it like this. He says that, that God allowed Jesus to die for us. And when he died on Calvary, he reached up and caught the holy hand of God. He reached down on Calvary and caught the unholy hand of man. And he brought a bitter dispute to a happy ending. 
If you never received Jesus Christ tonight, this is your moment. You ought to try him. Allow God to utilize Jesus to reach up and catch the holy hand of the holy God. Reach down and catch the, old, the unholy man of you as a man, woman, boy, or girl. And let him save you tonight. Confucius can't do it. Aristotle can't make it happen. Muhammad is not fit for it. Only Jesus can save you. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Allow Jesus, the God-man, to save you. We have several men of God all over the place. We have, I mean, if you look looking for a church. There's one, two, three, maybe four, five on every corner. Took a trip out of town to celebrate one year. And I looked around when I got to the neighboring church and there was a neighbor church in the cul-de-sac. A big, huge cul-de-sac. And there were nearly five, maybe four or five churches in that one cul-de-sac. And people came to those churches. Let me tell you, every church had at least one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight men of God at every church. Ministers, associate ministers, pastors, in this one cul-de-sac, about four to five churches. These were men of God. But there is only one God man. The hypostatic union. Jesus himself. Don't you want to meet him? Don't you want to know him? Why don't you try him today? You can say the last Wednesday night, the last Wednesday night of 2022, I, I got to know him. You must receive him and know him. As the invitation is given to you tonight, and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, this is your moment. It's your moment to try Him. The door is open. The door stands ajar. That means God is looking for you. God wants you to be blessed of Him. Don't wait the first Sunday. First Sunday in 2023 is not promised to you. The only time that's promised to you is right now. The only time we have. Will you trust him? Will you invite him in tonight? Isaiah says he was born for you. Isaiah says he was given for you. Therefore, the door is open. Will you bow your head with me and invite Jesus into your life? Let's say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you pray this prayer honestly, believing that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for sins and rose from the dead, we believe that you're now born again. We believe that whenever you leave planet Earth, you're on your way to heaven. Now what you have to do is get in a good Bible teaching, fundamental Bible teaching church. I recommend this church, the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. I recommend this church where People are local and global members of this church. And if you want to be a global member, just let us know. We'll be glad to include you in all our services. 
If you want to be a local member, please come by the New Beginning Church, 4251 Shiro Road, Houston, Texas, 77048. That is New Beginning Church, 4251. Shuramai, S-C-H-U-R-M-I-E-R. Shuramai, S-C-H-U-R-M-I-E-R. Shuramai Road, Houston, Texas, 77048 USA. We'll be glad to have you. We'll be glad you to be a, for you to be a part of our, our family of faith, where Jesus is the captain of the ship. For those of us who struggle with sin, and we all do, let us pray one for the other and let us pray for repentance and we repent unto the only begotten God, only begotten Son of God, the only God himself. He's the one that keeps us and he's the one that protects us. He protects our soul. He protects our spirit, man. He protects us as we walk from day to day. Trust him. Believe in him. As you go into this new year, commit God, I'm going to give you all I have. God, I thank you for saving me. God, I thank you for protecting me. I thank you for leading me. And because you've been such a great God to me, I commit tonight to do better than I've done. All the saints can do better. All the new converts can do better. And I want you to commit tonight as I commit to do better. Even as we end out these final year, final days of this year, let's do better this year. Don't wait till next year. We need to have a resolution this year, a new resolution this year. Not only do we need a resolution, we need a revolution. I mean, we need a constant change, a drastic change. Some of us need a boatload of changes. Let's commit that, God, I'm going to do better to get close to you. This year, we are, again, listening through the Word of God. We're listening the weekdays through the Word of God. And we're going to listen to the entire Bible this year by listening through the Word of God. I'm asking you to commit with us. I'm asking you to commit to the Word of God. I'm asking you to commit to daily Bible study. And if you're not on our list for Bible study, inbox me and let me know. Give me your phone number. And I'll send you the list. I'll send you the Bible listening list. And I will send you the Bible study list. The Bible study list is seven days a week. The Bible listening list is five days a week. And I've said to our church, and I say to you again, I say to you who are listening, if you're too busy for the word of God, you are too busy. And then if you're saturated with the Word of God, other stuff you won't have time for. Let's get committed to the Word of God. Let's get committed to church. It's time for folk to come back to church. Everybody's going everywhere else. Let's go back to church. It's time to get back in church. Let us flock to pews. This is the first Sunday coming up. The first Sunday of the new year. The first Sunday of the, the, the month of January. The first Sunday of the first week. The 1st of January is the first day of the new year. Come on back. It's time to come on back to church. Make a, make a commitment to come on back. Get involved. Let, let, let everybody know this year you won't be a pew member. God doesn't have pew members. Get involved. Get focused. Walk with the Lord. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your time together. It is now offering time. It's time for us to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. You can give to the New Beginning Church by mailing in your gifts. You can mail your gift to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting, period, Jesus at yahoo.com. The idea is as we lift Jesus, he draws all men unto us. Come on, let's get committed. Let's get committed to Jesus Christ. Get committed to the one who was born and the one who was given. The King of kings, the Lord of Lord. 
Lord, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We thank you for every opportunity. We pray for every giver. Bless the hearts of those who give. Lord, we pray that you bless their circumstances, bless their finances, bless their health, bless their, bless their wealth, bless their situation, Father God. We pray, Father God, that they can see you move and they see you move in a mighty way. Bless, Father God, as only you can. And Lord, we thank you for this moment together. We pray that you bless us as we go forth, that others will see us in you and you in us, that others will see us living for you, that others will see us walking for you. And Lord, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your presence, and we thank you for walking with us. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us join in by saying, Amen. Please make sure that we we continue to pray for those who, who needs prayer. Make sure that we pray for each other that needs prayer. For those of you who are members and visiting from the New Beginning Church, we will have our watch night service at 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. by way of Zoom. We want you to come, visitors come. We will have it by way of Zoom, inbox me, and let me know if you need the link, and I'll be glad to send the link to you. And we will have it Friday at 8 p.m., that is, that is Saturday. Saturday at 8 p.m. It'll be Saturday at 8 p.m. That's uh, December 31st, Saturday at 8 p.m. Please join us at 8 p.m. on Saturday. That's watch night service, 8 p.m. Uh, on Saturday, we will, we will have uh, a watch night service. We will have fun. We will have fellowship. And we will have the word on Saturday, December 31st at 8 p.m. Please join us and we'll be glad to meet you there. If you don't have the link, call me, text me, inbox me, holler at me across the street. Let me know that you need the link. We'll be glad to give you the link. We want visitors and friends to come and join the New Beginning Church Watch Night Service. Thank you so much. Be blessed. Keep it focused. Keep it, keep it upbeat and make sure you trust in Jesus because Jesus is the reason for this season. We know that, that we have a mission and we're on it to reach souls for Jesus Christ. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.